I want to start this video with a question. Does a cart, which is rolling down a ramp, move in one dimension or two? In other words, do we consider this one dimensional motion or two dimensional motion? If you said one dimensional motion, you would be absolutely correct. If you said two dimensional motion, you also would be absolutely correct. So what gives? Well, the big thing here is perspective. And that's we're going to see that a lot in physics, where your perspective on things is going to alter your approach to how you accomplish a task. If we use a conventional Cartesian coordinate system, something that looks like that, your normal x-y axis, then yes, the object, or the cart, is moving in two dimensions because it's moving down and to the left. So it's moving in both the y dimension and the x dimension. However, if you look at the shape of the path that the object is moving in, it's only moving in one dimension. So if we were to rotate our coordinate system so that our x-axis is no longer a horizontal line, but our x-axis is aligned with the ramp, then that becomes our x-axis, and our y-axis points in this direction. And that is what allows us to turn this problem into a one-dimensional problem. Now, when you think about motion on a ramp, it's really free fall, except it's more of a controlled form of free fall. By definition, free fall is whenever the only force that's acting on the object is the force of gravity. In this case, we do have uh, another force which is acting on the uh, cart, um, but we can think of this as a form of diluted free fall. In other words, with free fall, we said that acceleration was equal to g or 9.8 meters per second squared. But what's going to happen here is the acceleration is going to be less than g. So let's look at how we do that. And so this is why we had our discussion on vectors, because you need to understand how to look at a vector and break it up into components, and if necessary, recombine the components to form the vector you are looking for. So this ramp creates an angle of theta here. And this is relative to a horizontal line. The force of gravity, which is what causes the acceleration, is always going to be pointing in one direction, which is straight down. So the force of gravity, or the acceleration due to gravity, g, is in that direction. Now, in a normal xy coordinate system, gravity is pointing parallel to the y axis. No components are required. But if we rotate our axis so that it's parallel to the ramp, and now that's our axis, then g, by pointing straight down, it's no longer parallel to an axis. So what we can do is we can find components of gravity which are parallel to the y-axis, which is this, and parallel to the x-axis, which is that. So I'm going to call this g parallel, or I'm sorry, that is going to be g perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the ramp, and I'm going to call this one g parallel because it's parallel to the ramp. You see this component of gravity we can put right here and that makes it parallel to the ramp. So the real question for us is going to be what is the angle here? What is that angle? Now it should be obvious that this is a 90 degree angle because we have found vector components, and the components are always at right angles to each other. It should also be obvious that this is a right um, 90 degree angle here as well, because gravity points straight down, perpendicular to the x-axis, 
parallel to the y-axis before we rotate the coordinate system. So we have this angle here, which I'm going to call beta. And, or you could call it theta 2 if you want. So the question becomes, is this angle that I've identified in my vector theta or beta? And it's actually very easy. We're going to do this more than once because we're going to see this again whenever we talk about forces. So first of all, the total number of degrees in a right triangle is 180. So we have 180 is equal to theta plus beta plus 90. Now, when we look at a straight line, there's 180 degrees from here to here in our straight line. So that means I know that this angle here is 90 degrees because this is the perpendicular component to the ramp and perpendicular is 90 degrees. So we have beta plus 90 and it takes theta to finish making this 180 degrees. So this is angle theta right here. So in order to determine the acceleration of the cart rolling down the ramp, we need the component of gravity which is parallel to the ramp. The component of gravity parallel to the ramp is going to be found using trigonometry. This side of the right triangle is opposite the angle and so this becomes the sine function so g parallel is equal to g sine theta. The perpendicular component is not important right now but it will be later so I'll give it to you and that's g cosine of theta. Alright so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of an object in motion on a ramp. So what we've done is we've placed a dynamics cart on the ramp and we want to know with what speed does the cart reach the bottom of the ramp and how far does the cart roll during the second half second interval. Now that sounds a little confusing and it definitely confuses everybody the first time around. You really got to stop and think about it and try to wrap your head around it. But hopefully you'll see that it's really a, a simple question um, once you've seen it explained. So let's take a look at part A. Now in part A we want to know what the speed is. So the first thing we're going to do is we have our diagram. We know that the ramp is 1.8 meters long and we're going to say that that's 1.8 meters from where the block starts till it reaches the bottom of the ramp. This is just a generic rec uh, triangle with a block on it, and so we'll just say that this is where the motion starts. So step one is done. We've drawn our picture. Step two is to list out all of our information. So we have D, V initial, V final, A, and T. D is going to be a negative 1.8 meters. V initial is zero because it's starting from rest. V final is what we're looking for, so I use the box. The acceleration is technically unknown at this point, but we've already determined that it's going to be equal to G sine of theta. And then finally, the time is an unknown quantity. If we go ahead and look at our equations, we've got three possible choices and of those choices two of them involve time and we've not been given time so it seems like the obvious starting point for this particular question is going to be the time independent equation of motion so we're going to use v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad v initial is zero and so v final is equal to the square root of 2 times g sine theta 
times d. Now, this g sine theta is going to be negative, and that's because the block is accelerating to the left in our new coordinate system. So the negative on this g cancels out with the negative on that d. And so what we get is v final is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 sine of, uh, well, we don't know yet, theta times d, which is 1.8. So we've got to find theta. We know that the ramp is 30 centimeters high, which is 0 0.3 meters, and we know that the ramp is 1.8 meters long. Now, the sine function, sine of theta, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In our particular problem, the opposite side is given, that's 30 centimeters, and the hypotenuse is also given as 1.8 meters. Or if we wanted to, we could write this as dy over d. But here's the point. I can replace sine theta with that ratio. So we're going to get v final is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 times the ratio of 0 0.3 over 1.8 times 1.8. And so we actually save ourselves some math because 1.8 is going to cancel out. And now v final is going to be equal to, let's calculate. We're going to do the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.3 and that's going to give us 2.42 meters per second. Now remember that the square root gives two possible answers, a positive and a negative. And since the block is moving to the left in this diagram, we would have to choose negative 2.42 meters per second. It's also possible that you drew your ramp, or you could have drawn your ramp, so that the block was moving down and to the right. And that is also completely acceptable. And the answer would be a positive 2.42 meters per second. Oftentimes, when you get a problem that's on a ramp like this, they don't even ask you for the velocity. They just ask you for the speed. Because remember that speed is just equal to the magnitude of the velocity or basically ignore the minus sign. Now, we are asked with, for part B, how far does the cart roll during the second half second interval? The second half second interval, first of all, let's look at it this way. This is t equals zero here, and after t equals one half of a second, it's located right here, and then the next half second is going to put it down here where t is equal to 1. So what we're asking for is what is the distance between these two points? That's what you're being tasked with finding. All right, now, in order to do that, you need to know what is the position at 0 0.5 seconds and what is the position at one second? So we're going to go to our equations and we need an equation with time and preferably, preferably does not have v final because that is not a known quantity at those two locations in space. And so we do have an equation that serves that purpose and that's the position function. d is equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared. So let's write, for d 0 0.5, we have v initial t 
plus one half a t squared. V initial is zero. And so we get uh, d is equal to one half times 9.8 times the sine of theta. And remember that the sine of theta was 0.3 over 1.8. times t squared, which is 0 0.5 squared. So let's go ahead and calculate this first value. So we get 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 0 0.3 divided by 1.8 times 0.5 squared. And that's going to give us d is equal to 0 0.2 0 0.04 meters. All right, now that's a displacement. So if we look at this, displacement is the same thing as delta x, which is x final minus x initial. So we get x final minus x initial, but x initial was 0. So d and x final have the same numerical value, even though they represent two different things. Okay, now d of one second, that's going to be delta x for one second, or x final minus x initial. And it would be smart if you choose the starting location as this once again. So that means x initial is going to be zero. So we'll have v initial t plus one half a t squared. V initial was zero, and so just like the first equation, we get d1, or actually this is now um, x1. x1 is equal to one half times 9.8 times the ratio for sine of theta, the ratio of 0.3 over 1.8 times 1 squared, which is just 1. So x1 is equal to 0.5 times 9.8 times 0.3 divided by 1.8. And we get x1 is 0 0.817 meters. So finally, what is this displacement between 0 0.5 seconds and 1 second? Well, that displacement is going to be equal to, we have delta x is equal to x of 1 minus x of 0 0.5 x1 is 0 0.817 minus 0 0.204. And so the displacement here is going to be, get out our calculator, 0 0.817 minus 0 0.204. And so the displacement is 0 0.61 meters. And that is going to be to the left, of course. Um, so you might want to write that as a negative value. If you had the ramp going in the other direction, it would be a positive value.